What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Fool the King. My name is Splattercat and I've been really looking forward to this game. Actually, I, the first time I saw it, the graphical stylings of the game just made me like go, whoa. Like I very much like the low texture, you know, polygon style of the game. And so I figured I'd share it with all of you. It's also a game that I enjoy as a board game fan. For the King is, at its essence, a board game that you play on your computer by yourself. Uh, it's a game where you take control of three adventurers and there are certain objectives you have to take care of. There are random events along the way. It's got turn-based Final Fantasy style combat that fills in the gaps right there. And I do think that the game is pretty cool. I like it a lot. It is a difficult game though. So if you're a gamer that has a problem playing games on easy, this might not be for you because this game is definitely out to trounce you. But because of that, the game ends up feeling very very dire and it actually makes everything in the game feel more serious and so while certain games like crown takers frustrated me a little bit for some reason this game is equally as difficult and equally as luck based as that game but I, maybe it's just the presentation or something like that that really swaps it around for me i like this game a lot and so i figure we do a short series on it so you can check it out and see if it's something that you want to get for yourself the game is not out yet i think it comes out on february 28th I've got the game about a week early right now. I think I'm recording this on like the 21st or whatever. So that it's nice. It's up on YouTube. It's already established. People can check it out and they can figure out what the game's all about and decide if it's something that they want to invest time into. We're going to go with a solo adventure. We're going to do a new adventure and we're going to play on easy. This game is tough. This game is very, very tough. At the moment, playing on normal, all of my campaigns have been on normal and I've never made it more than halfway through the game without dying. I'm going on easy because halfway through the game is like... About an hour in, I guess. The game is meant to be played over and over and over again and have a high replayability. As you win and you complete objectives, you get these things called tomes. I have eight of them right now, and you can use the tomes to unlock new character classes, new gear which will spawn on the cards inside of the game, new locations you can visit with your characters, new encounters that you can participate in. So the game is meant to be played a lot as you unlock things. Right now, I'm saving up my money because I want the woodcutter, but I could be convinced to take the busker because he's got that dope facial hair. I haven't decided who I want to unlock next. The character classes are trapper, busker, herbalist, woodcutter, blacksmith, hunter, minstrel, and scholar. I think of the classes that are in the game as of right now. This game is in early access, so it is going to continue to develop and get patched. But as of right now, it's actually got a lot of content for a game that's in early access. Like, seriously, it does. There's a lot of stuff to do in this game, and it's already really, really replayable. So I'm excited to see what happens in the future. The other thing I like about this game is that the characters aren't heroes. That's the nice feeling that I get from it. The characters are not heroes. They're just normal people that have been forced into a shitty situation because the world is essentially ending and they got to roll up their sleeves and even though they're like a blacksmith, they've got to do what they got to do in order to make stuff happen. It gives it kind of a Lord of the Rings feeling where you know it's a doomed quest and you're probably not going to make it. But at the same time, it makes the hero characters feel more heroic to me for some reason. It makes me enjoy it a lot. I don't think I would like this game nearly enough or nearly as much if the characters were like knight or like wizard or like sorcerer and stuff like that because those are people that are really really good at what they do you know those are people who are professional adventurers this game is just normal people undertaking stuff but yeah normal this game's gonna kick your ass so in the interest of making the YouTube series last a little while longer and actually getting a few episodes out we're gonna go with easy mode but I have played all of my campaigns up until this one have been on normal and I can tell you almost a hundred percent they have not gone well I've already set up my characters I've got Leomond who is a hunter I've got Forte, who is a Minstrel. Uh, to me, the Minstrel is by far the best support class. You can swap the Minstrel with a, let's see here. I mean, you can take whatever classes you want. You can be three Blacksmiths if you really, really want to. And in fact, let's walk through the classes here. So the Blacksmith. Uh, the Blacksmith is really, really good at fighting and they have a, ki a skill called Steady. And it says they can absorb and turn an attack, letting her armor absorb what would have been a staggering blow. So when the enemy crits, this class has a chance of just not getting hit. Like, anytime the enemy hits, your chance at dodging and blocking goes up, like, exponentially. And she just, like, ducks out of the way, and it just cancels out their crit, which is really upsetting when it's you. But it's amazing when you eke a dodge out on a hit that would otherwise kill you. Uh, the Hunter. The Hunter is very, very good at Guile, which is represented by this stat right here. I don't know the names of all the stats. Blacksmiths and Lumberjacks use that one. This one right here is for random stuff like drinking potions and seeing what happens. So basically, it's Strength, Vitality, Luck... Perception or awareness, I think is what they called that. This is the the dexterity stat, which is what the minstrel has. And this is your chance of getting movement. Everything in this game is randomized, which you'll see once we get in. And so your stats affect how random the game is when you attempt things that you have the stats for. The hunter. 
Uh, he uses the Guile stat, the Dexterity stat, in order to, I'm sorry, not the Dexterity stat, he uses the Guile stat, basically, to get stuff done. He uses a bow, uses weapons that require an eyeball in order to use. Pretty good class, pretty good damage dealer, can soak a decent hit. I, I like him, he's a good fill-in character. Aside from that, I think he starts with a Tinder Pouch, a Hunting Bow, Hermit Grass, and three gold. And then he's got really, really good accuracy, although... Eh, I find that he still misses quite a bit. The game is random. You've got the Scholar. I think the Scholar is the weakest character by far right now. Uh, the Scholar is the character I don't take very often, in all honesty. I truly, I take the Scholar every now and again just to mix things up. But I find that he's a little underwhelming compared to the Minstrel, who does everything that he does but better. Uh, we've got the Minstrel, who is your Bard class. She uses magical damage. Uh, she's got skills called Encourage and Inspire. So if you stop in a location where the Minstrel is without using up all your movement points, there's a chance that she will inspire you. If she inspires you, it means that you get free XP. It's like you killed a monster in that zone, but you didn't have to do anything. So it's pretty rad. Alternatively, she's got a skill called Encourage, which can fill in for one of your luck stats, which you'll, it won't make sense right now. But once you get into the game, I'll show you what I mean, and you'll be like, oh, instantly upon seeing it in action, you'll know what it means. We're going to take the Minstrel this time around. So we've got a Hunter, a Minstrel, and a Blacksmith. Uh, that's my favorite party. Also, I like Hunter and Double Blacksmith. But if you take Hunter and Double Blacksmith, there are enemies that have armor, and only magic gets through armor, and so you're going to find yourself at some point hitting somebody for like one damage over and over and over again until the fight ends, and having a Minstrel there sort of speeds that along. Let's start. The land of Faerule has enjoyed a golden age of unity and prosperity ushered in by King Bronner, a great hero and benevolent ruler. Sadly, in Bronner's twilight years, the Golden Age came crashing to an end. An unnatural force of chaos began to bloom across the land. Bronner was murdered in his palace at the capital city of Parid by a mysterious assailant. The bereaved queen, Rosamon, stepped forth to shepherd the people of Faerule through this dark time. With an unknown enemy in their midst and chaos unleashing ancient forces of corruption and death, Rosamon's first act was to call upon the heroes of old, who had helped Bronner keep the land peaceful for decades. Retired soldiers and knights took mounted swords down from where they hung over their mantles, fetched creaky armor from sheds and cellars, and set out to save the world once more. Before long, these old champions lay dead, their valor having finally failed them. The one old hero Rosamond had most hoped to see was Mariglio Vexor, Bronner's oldest friend and former court wizard. Vexor was an, H -era, was an expert on magic and chaos energy, and would surely have a theory about these recent events. But Brexor had vanished years ago, and she could only guess the wizard had met with a dark fate all his own. Rosamond had no choice but to call upon the ordinary citizens of Faerule to accept a great, great burden, to leave their homes, abandon their vocations, and seek throughout the world in search of the source of these troubles. In so doing, she has entrusted the survival of her kingdom, of the very civilized world, to the citizens themselves. And though many will surely perish in the quest, the citizens clamor to answer the call of their beloved queen. So you see what I mean? You're just like a normal person who's caught up like in a shitty situation and you're just having to live with it. And I like that about it. It's kind of like these people have been drafted because the world's going to end anyway, so what do they have to lose? But they're normal people with normal skill sets. So we start out in the town of Orton. First the wizard Vexor vanishes, then my own husband is slain in his palace. You may be the last hope of Faerule. Seek out Hildebrandt in Woodsmoke. You will be told how best to aid our efforts. Once you receive the quest, you must complete it within 14 rounds. Otherwise, our kingdom will be consumed by chaos. So this is kind of a rapid-fire game. Uh, you've basically got, I think, actually, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So yeah, you've basically got 14 turns to win the game, as far as I understand it. And so you've got three characters. They move independently. That's how our movement works. So based on your agility stat... It will roll a dice, basically, for each one of these slots. So you have a maximum slot, and then it rolls a dice for each one. This character rolled three successes, which means on her turn, she can move three spaces. Now then, Amaranth is the first one to go. A few things you need to know about the way the game works. We've got armor, we've got resistance, we've got evasion. So basically, this is how much damage is reduced from physical attacks, damage reduced from magical attacks, and then also your chance of just ducking out of the way and not getting hit. You've also got focus, which is what you can use. You see those slots that filled in? Well, when you attack and when you attempt difficult tasks, you can actually right-click the task, and you can use focus instead of rolling the die. It's a very cool mechanic, and focus can actually dig your ass out of a horrible situation if you make it work. So 
Definitely think about it. We got a beast man warrior down here that we can fight with. We've got gold, we've got our HP, we've got our XP down here. As you get XP, you will get stronger. There's no talent trees or anything right now, but I do actually hope they'll add them. I would love to see some talent trees added to each of the classes so that you can develop them in the way that you want to develop them. So for the hunter to make him super dodgy, for the warrior to either make them like offensive, defensive, or super dodgy. You know, for the, the minstrel, you can either make their buffs more likely to happen, increase their damage, or make it so like they're more likely to move further than everybody else on a turn with like a marching song or something like that. Basically just ways to tailor your characters to the playthrough. So that's the stone hero. You get full focus and 12 XP if you end your turn right there. Or if you just go over there. I'm going to fight the Beastman Warrior first. Now, when you mouse over an enemy, it'll show you your heroes. If they are inside of any of those red hexes, they will join the fight. And so, if, let's say, our hunter was up here, he would not join in on that fight. It would only be whoever was inside the red squares. I'm going to send the enemy down to here. And it's a Beastman Warrior. A couple options here. So, you can see what I mean with focus here. If I wanted to, I can fight, I can ambush, I can sneak, or I can retreat. Sneaking allows you to just, like, walk right through their hex just in case they're in the way. And is actually easier than ambushing, which allows you to have the first turn. Although ambushing is a little weird right now. I've had successful ambushes where the enemy still got to hit first. And so... I don't tend to use ambush very often because I think maybe it needs to be balanced a tiny bit as of right now. Like, sometimes you'll get the first hit, but your entire party won't get to go first just the person that moved gets to go first and that's not if you fail an ambush they get to hit you first and so it's not really worth the effort this starts it with just flat everybody's speed stat to decide who goes first we are going to fight this individual but if i wanted to use focus i could right click like that right there and you see i could instantly succeed at that task if i wanted to by using up my focus not going to though we're just going to fight him and so welcome to combat this is how combat works in for the king I think the game is very, very beautiful. I'm sure there'll be some people who disagree with me and they don't like the style. But I actually think that the graphics are stylized. I think they're going to age very well. And I think everything looks fantastic. I like it a lot. This is actually scratching a lot of itches for me as a gamer. Let's go ahead and fire a bow at him. So the way this works is every single time you try to fill in one of those slots, it rolls a dice. And each one that you fill in... It will make you more accurate with your shot and have less of a chance to fail. And it'll also make you deal more damage. You can only get a crit if you fill in all three. Well, you only get to roll for a crit if you go in for all three. So here we go. So three successes right there. He dealt two damage. Because he's supposed to deal six damage on a full fill, this guy has four armor, so his six was reduced down to a two. So this guy's got an armor value. Uh, we can use Dazzle or we can use Alto. Dazzle's pretty good. It's physical damage, but Dazzle gives you a chance of stunning him and canceling his turn. So we're going to do that. And we failed, unfortunately. So he's going to block the attack right there because the amount of successes we had was not enough to land a hit. He's going to get a perfect roll and deal 7 damage, which is gnarly as shit for a first combat. That's really, really bad. Let's go ahead and roll. We've got 3 hits right there. It's going to reduce him by 4. I think our minstrel is going to go before him. He does have snipe shot, which ignores armor on a 31 perfect, so we're going to try it. But we failed, so he's probably going to block that one because one success was not enough the last time we tried this. Let's go for a magic attack, and there's a perfect hit. It's going to put him on his back, and let's see what we got. So we got two gold for all of our party members. We got a wooden buckler, which is going to give them three evasion. I think that would be best applied. Oh, I can't really put that on anybody, so never mind. Uh, she's got taunt from her shield. I'm just going to collect it for right now, and I'm probably going to sell it when we go to town. So there it is. We've managed to actually finish off that fight right there. Uh, on a nice day, she's got a chance to get extra movement. And so there it is. We'll start sending her on the way to Woodsmoke. You've found the remains of an unlucky adventurer. Let's loot it. We got five gold and a heavy sword. That's a very nice acquisition for this early on in the game. She also got a shiny pendant. Which stat? I'm going to put it on her right now. But which stat is talent? Oh, that's the bard stat. Okay. It's the bard stat, and that's going to be the end of her turn. So the bard only got three moves on her turn. I'm going to bring her over to here. We're all going to kind of head in this direction. When you move over a hex, there's a chance that you get a random event like that dead guy that we just found right there. We just found a dead dude on the side of the road. It's a rough neighborhood. Dead dude's out here. He got a five roll on his, which is a really, really good move, which will take him all the way to wood smoke today. So there it is. He got four XP for completing the task. It's always good to see new faces join the quest. I am Hildebrandt, the Queen's agent overseeing things in the Guardian Forest. Things are bad here. Really bad. All signs point to some evil folk hatching a plot underground. The deepest caves in the region are accessed through the glittering mines, but they've recently been sealed with dark magic. 
My sources have spotted a strange contraption here in the Guardian Forest. Go investigate it. I think it's our best lead. And so from there, that's going to be it. See, the game really reminds me of Arkham Horror or Runebound or Quest of the Heroes. If you've ever played any of those board games, it's very, very similar. It's kind of an amalgamation of all of those. Now that he's in town, he has five gold. We can go to the market and see what they got going on. There's stuff here, everything from boots that you can add on to tattered robes, leather vests, things that will make you a little bit stronger. That's one of the reasons why I actually kept some of the stuff on her is because when she comes in here... I'd like to sell some stuff and get a leather vest, although that is very, very expensive. The other mechanic you probably want to look at is you probably want to give yourself a quest. If we give ourselves a quest, we can quest for either an item, we can quest for gold, or we can quest for XP. All three are worthwhile. Sometimes with items, I would say item is actually probably one of the worst gambles. You can get some of the best stuff out of item, but you can also just get something like a healing potion, which while useful is not super useful, or you can get like a cure, a cure poison potion from it. And if you spend a bunch of time working on it, it's like, eh, I don't know. The bounty gives you 24 gold, which means that you can spend the money on whatever you want inside of town, which I find to be a much better gamble. Uh, delivery gives you a bunch of XP, which allows you to level up, gives you a little bit more, gives you a little bit more HP, raises your stats slightly, so when you're doing challenges, you'll be a little bit better off. I'm going to go with gold, so there's a bounty here. It wants me to kill a stone golem. That's definitely going to be too difficult for us. The Crag Hulk, I think, is probably going to be... We're on day two now. Or, I'm sorry, day one in the morning. The Crag Hulk is a challenge three, so that means that he's designed for a full party of level threes. We're not going to be able to handle him. However, we could technically fight with the Beastman over here and stack up a little bit of XP. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to have her loop around. They're all inside the combat anyway, so let's fight with the Beastman Warrior. Let's go. Oh, he's got backup. But we've got a dodge straight off the bat right there. Very, very nice. I'm going to try and kill the crow first. And so call shot, three successes. He gets one shot at the outset of the fight. I'm going to try and stun this one. I'm going to fail, though, unfortunately. Stunning. So the thing is, the less rolls you have, the easier it is to crit, but the higher your fail chance is. So if you have, like, five of these right here, chances are you're going to get enough hits in order to land a strike on your enemy. Because just by probability, you'll probably end up with two or three hits out of all these. But you'll never crit, which means if you never crit, because you have to get every single one of them to actually have a chance of critting. And because you never crit, that means none of the special stuff that your weapons do will ever proc. Because procs are mostly on crits in this game. And so, it's kind of a balance. Uh, some weapons have a high fail chance, but a higher crit chance. And some weapons are vice versa. They have a much higher hit chance, but a much lower crit chance. Let's see if we can hit this guy for 15. Oh, that's a good one right there. With a mighty blow, Amaranth brings that guy back down to the ground, and he's just savaged. Oh, we've got the Scholar's Wraps. That's going to lower our toughness, which is the fighty stat that the Blacksmith uses, but it's going to raise our Fortitude, which is the thing that we use when we drink potions to see if we get poisoned or whatever. It's also going to raise Magical Resistance, though, which is really, really good. So I'm going to equip those on Forte. Uh, boots do show up on characters. One of my pet peeves is when you equip characters with gear and it doesn't show up, this game, if you put a new armor on a character, they are wearing that armor. If you put a new hat on the character, they are wearing that hat. And I very much like that feature. Uh, that's a Purify Scroll. We cast that on a hex that's poisoned in order to get rid of the poison. And so that's a thing that we could also do. She got two movement. Well, let's have her finish off in wood smoke, I guess. She's in the market right now, which means we can actually sell off some stuff if we really, really want to. With a wooden buckler, she can sell that for two. I would recommend it. The Purify Scroll, she's probably not going to get a bunch of mileage out of either. So I would sell that too. We do have Tinder Pouches. Tinder Pouches allow you to make a camp node on the map where your characters can camp and get their focus and their HP back. Which I like a lot, actually. That feature is really, really cool and you should utilize it as much as possible. Because if you don't, it's going to suck. Uh, we can get her a Rusty Blade, which is not as good as the Heavy Sword. A Rusty Medallion would give her more toughness. And then we could pass off the Shiny Pendant to our bard who would actually make much better use of it we can also just buy supplementary items like healing herbs and stuff like that she doesn't have any boots we could give her hide boots which would give her armor resistance and vitality which i think would make her a little bit tougher because that would take her to three two she's got the money for it i mean i would love to give her a leather vest or whatever and get her up to five armor so she's not eating hits anymore but it's just so expensive that i don't know if we're going to be able to do it and everybody has independent gold you can't pass gold in between each other they've all got their own kind of stock 
I guess. She's going to start here next turn, so there's no need to do this right now. Alternatively, you can go to the healer, which will get rid of your ailments. You can meditate to get some focus points back. You can rest at the end to get HP and focus in a smaller amount. You can go to the pipe smith so that when you smoke your herbs, that's right, everybody smokes weed in this game to heal themselves and to get rid of poisons and stuff. I forgot to mention that. Another reason to love the game. Another reason to love the game. I'm going to end her turn right here since we're going to be here anyways. And I would actually really, really, really like to fight this bad guy down here if I can while I'm in the region. She's got 16 gold rocking. How far out will that allow the engagement of combat? Oh, there's a beast man right there. Okay, well, I wanted to fight anyway, so that's perfectly fine. I'm okay with this. Uh, with a called shot, that might be a hit. Yeah, it's not going to be enough with his armor rating, unfortunately. Ah, I just can't get him with a stun. Trying real hard, but missing is a big part of this game, and it's actually something that I personally think should be phased downwards. Uh, if you guys are fans of the channel, you will know that in general, I find missing to be a pointless... I find missing and not being able to hit the enemy kind of a pointless mechanic in turn-based combat. Uh... It just serves to extend combat out in a way that is non-productive, basically. The only thing it leads to is the player being frustrated, in general. I mean, yes, when you score an awesome dodge here and there, it is cool, but people don't remember that. They always remember the time that they couldn't hit the enemy ten times in a row, which has literally happened to me in this game. Several times I've been unable to hit the enemy over and over and over and over again, and it's just like... Arr! You know, we can have her stay at the end for five gold, but that's kind of expensive. Ooh, there's a short bow there. Can I give her anything better that would utilize her stats? There's a decent loot that's better than what she's got going on, but it costs 23 gold, and she don't have anything to sell either. I'm going to give her... Oh, she's already got the Scholar's Wraps. Never mind. She doesn't even need that. She's got two resistance. That would lower her resistance to three, but it would raise her armor to two, which I think might work out better. Let's stick with the stuff we got for free. I'm going to have her buy... God's Beard's so expensive, too. Damn. Let's leave her alone for a second. And I'll have her jump out to here. She's going to have to make camp pretty soon. He just barely got enough movement to make this happen. So she's going to be left out of the combat if she's over there. Okay, well, never mind. Let's just make our way towards the next objective. Oh, it's an ambush. So he's ambushed by a dire crow. For four damage even, which is not a bad hit for a crow. That's a pretty solid shot. He should put it down with one hit right there, though. Should be easy enough. So that was an ambush by the enemy. You know how we can ambush enemies? They can ambush us, too. And when you get ambushed, you have to fight by yourself. Which can lead to some really, really, really unfortunate situations. Let's go ahead and... Oh, there's a magic merchant with an impressive set of wares. He has a rusted plate, which is an accessory that gives plus two to armor. That's not bad at all. A silver skull, which increases your damage by plus one. A talent pendant, a clouded crystal, and a four. I'm going to buy the rusted plate, actually. Yeah, buy an equip so that you have resistance four. Now we're as tough as a beast man. Hooray for us. As tough as a beast man. And then she will press on to the destination that I clicked previously. That is a big, mean-looking critter. You've got gold. Go check it out. See if there's anything you can do. As far as... I would probably give her the talent necklace so that she's got a better chance of landing the stuff she's trying to do. So she's got plus three to talent now, which is pretty cool. That's actually going to get her up to 81, which is good. I think that means whenever she rolls a dice, she's got an 81% chance of filling in the slot, I think. Not 100% on that one, though, so don't quote it. Don't, like, go to other people's videos and be like, Splattercat said, because I might be wrong. That's just the way I'm interpreting it. Ooh, free XP, I'll take it. Yes, please. As far as that goes, we're not going to get into a fight right here because I know the storyline. So let's go ahead and actually it's a strength check. I'm going to use my focus to auto pass that. So there it is. I'm glad that I did too because it doesn't look like luck was on my side. We got a book of lore. That was that thing that I was showing you at the beginning of the episode that we used to buy new character classes and stuff. So basically every time you make it a step in the game, you get one of those things so you can unlock new stuff and new gear and new things that can drop. Great work. Maybe they'll think twice about leaving their junk in my forest. I always whip my junk out in other people's forests. It's just a natural habit of mine. And there's a reason why I'm not allowed in all the public parks where I live. Looks like those purple robe folk didn't appreciate us breaking their big toy. I'd say it's time we formally introduce ourselves. You best prepare for a good fight. Oh, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. Let's have ourselves a battle here. Oh, it's a nice day. Good. So I'm going to bring him to right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a camp node. 
And so there it is. And he's just going to meditate because he has low focus, but his HP isn't that low. All right, so it's a rainy day. We're going to bring her up here. She's going to rest because I want everybody to make use of the resources we have in front of us. She definitely needs to rest. She's the most beat up out of everybody. And that puts us into the next objective with our stats around where I would like us to be. He'll get 12 XP for free by going to the Stone Hero. I'm going to do that, but we're going to do it in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. This game is called For the King. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. This is a very much, it's kind of a dice rollers game. If you don't like luck and chance and lots of missing and stuff like that, if you don't enjoy rolling dice, this is not the game for you. However, if you enjoy board games, tabletop, rolling dice and failing and just being like, oh well, and getting back to it, this might be one worth checking out, especially as the EA moves forward. I'd love to see what the early access has like a year from now, because the game is already fairly well rounded out as it stands. The only complaint I have is that like some of the balancing feels slightly off, but other than that, as long as you play the game on easy, you should be playing a reasonably solid title. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for coming on out. I do, everybody. This is For the King. If you want to get the game for yourself, it's not out yet, but I will have a link that will activate down below for when the game is out. All right? If you wanted to support me, you like what I do here on the channel, check out the Patreon. Great way to support me and make sure the videos don't go anywhere, the lights stay on, and all that kind of fun stuff. Other than that, bye-bye, everybody. I do.